afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another episode. Working in open shift. And, and sometimes we have a shift. This is so we awesome. We are an open culture that it is actually a big piece of the component for your get up. Everybody has something that they can say. On top of the Red Hat portfolio. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You have lurched into another episode of the Level Up Hour. So thank you for joining us. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let everybody know that we're out here on the air. Uh, I'm Randy Russell, Director of Certification at Red Hat. So shout out to all those Red Hat certified professionals out there. And I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jafar Charibi and Scott McBrien. Greetings, gentlemen. And we have an addi- And so today we have a very interesting uh, episode in which we're going to talk about pipelines as code. Okay, and to help us untangle that uh, is Shamul Bujna, who is the lead architect and developer of guess what, pipelines as code. So I think this is going to be a, a very interesting episode. So. First of all, let's let's talk a little bit about pipeline as code, Jafar. That's uh, you know, I you know, I think I'm going to back it up a whole lot and, and say, well, you know, I think most of us at this point in time are familiar with the concept of a CI/CD pipeline. You know, continuous integration, mm-hmm. continuous continuous deployment, where you have your application, the new feature, the bug fix, whatever. And it is whisked seamlessly and effortlessly through test and stage all the way to its glorious end in production, right? Uh, so help me understand what we're getting at when we talk about about pipeline as code. Okay, sure, sure. So again, I wanted to thank uh, Shmuel for joining us here uh, today. Um, so um, he will be explaining a bit more of the new features that we are offering on, on OpenShift, but to, to, to give some background to this. So uh, we all know that traditional CI CD tools have been evolving since uh, we started using that kind of tools to provide some kind of um, scripted automation to, to, to do your pipelines. So basically writing what we call domain specific languages where you have some scripting, specific scripting like Groovy or whatever uh, specific languages was used for uh, that specific CI CD tool. Uh, so basically, uh, for example, if we speak about OpenShift and Jenkins, we've been providing something called uh, support for Jenkins files, which basically is a, a groovy script that orchestrates your CI uh, and CD steps throughout the different environments. But as the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem really boomed and uh, I would say ex- exploded and it started to become the de facto uh, infrastructure to run applica- containerized applications. So I'm saying Kubernetes is the infra. Uh, probably some some people will throw some some rocks or, or tomatoes at me, but basically, yeah, we can consider that it's the the new the modern uh, infrastructure to run those uh, applications. Uh, and uh, something that has emerged uh, about two years ago, which is uh, could we uh, think about Kubernetes also as a CI or CD tool? So basically, instead of uh, relying on a dedicated CI tool like Jenkins, or uh, I don't want to call out um, those tools because they are great and they are good at what they do, but like yeah, Jenkins, GitLab, or Travis, or whatever, or those tools. Um, so the goal was, can we have something that is relying solely on Kubernetes as the CI CD engine? Can we extend Kubernetes to understand new concepts of CI CD? Uh, and since the introduction of what we call custom resource definitions in the Kubernetes API, that allowed us to create some new concepts that were not existing in Kubernetes before in a simple way. So the, the, the key thing behind it is in a simple way. So basically you, you can now tell to Kubernetes Here's a new concept, it's called a pipeline. Here's a new concept, it's called a step. Here's a new concept, it's called a, a task or whatever. And basically now Kubernetes starts to understand how to trigger uh, and run pipelines natively 
by orchestrating containerized um, actions uh, or tasks. And thus, we don't need those uh, dedicated CI CD tools anymore. And one of the drawbacks, I would say, well, not drawbacks, but one of the things that you had to take care uh, of was the administration uh, of those tools. So now, since you are switching to Kubernetes, that's, I would say, less administration. So that's the first. It's more uh, portability because now you can have your CI running on any Kubernetes uh, cluster that has those uh, concepts installed. So basically, it's based on an upstream project called Tecton. And the great thing with Tecton is that it's all of those uh, great CI CD vendors, players coming together to come up with some sort of standard. So the, the uh, standard way of, uh, of pr uh, pragmatically describing what a pipeline is or what we call pipeline as code, right? So yeah. how can we write YAML files that translate into a pipeline execution. So that was the whole uh, idea behind uh, Tecton. So yeah. that was to provide a Kubernetes native CI CD uh, uh, ecosystem. All right. So, so if you have a, if you have a, na now that it's Kubernetes native, you get yeah. the, the benefit of not having some integration points that you might have otherwise. You have mm -hmm. the consolidating down to, a smaller number of uh, technologies or products in a sense, and potentially a smaller sure. number of vendors, which is also sometimes a benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it is it is actually something that's native. I, there's something ironic in this, in that I think a lot of the world has come to Kubernetes and to OpenShift with the desire to build out their, their CI CD pipelines. And it can be effective for that, but it has not actually been uh, a native capability from the outset. So it's really interesting to me that now the purpose that so many uh, organizations come to OpenShift is actually going to be supported natively. Would that be a fair statement to make? Yeah, yeah definitely. And, and so the interesting thing is that, um, so of course, Kubernetes is known for its scalability. Uh, you can now orchestrate thousands of uh, tasks and, and pipelines because Kubernetes allows you to have that scalability, you can dedicate. So you could do that before with the traditional CI tools by using what we call agents. So basically you had to deploy agents, you had to administrate them, upgrade them, and all, all, all of those kind of, of topics. And also one of the, the, the things was, say you wanted to integrate now with a new set of um, tools. Um, it's so, Either there's a, an existing plugin that you can rely on uh, and just uh, take it and use it, but you are limited to whatever the plugin offers, or you are a massive Java guru and you can, for instance, create your own pipeline. Uh, I have some colleagues who did that, uh, but like they are crazy guys, but they are very talented <laughs> guys, of course. Uh, but now with the, with the Kubernetes and Tecton uh, way of doing it, it's basically you are creating container images that contain all the tools that you need. And then mm -hmm. through the YAML uh, steps, you are referring, referencing those images and say, this is the command that you need to execute in this, uh, by pulling this specific image. So now it becomes much more, uh, much easier to extend the capabilities of your CI CD um, ecosystem, basically. Yeah. As, lo as long as you can put it in a container, it, it's going to be fine with your it is pipeline. It is ready to go. Cool. So um, we actually already have a question in the chat. And uh, Shmuel, I think uh, a perfect introduction to your participation here would be to put you on the spot. So Shrikant to ask the question <laughs> is, OK, how do we manage pipeline as code when we have hundreds of microservices? And in brief, the answer is, uh, the brief is that you're doing uh, integration testing. Is that uh, so? First, uh, so first, like we need to maybe to explain like what's uh, what's pipeline as code. I mean, uh, uh, Jaffa has done uh, like a great uh, introduction like to uh, Tecton pipeline and uh, how you specify pipeline like in YAMLs and uh, define uh, your uh, your testing and uh, the steps, the different steps for the testing. But uh, pipeline as code itself. 
um, what it does is that uh, you have a you have a repository like where you have some codes inside it, uh, microservices, for example, like we uh, was mentioning, and uh, and you want part of the development process. So when you're doing a change to your code, you want like to have your pipelines living with it. So you want like to be to to be able like that your uh, that your change that's happening in your code like reflects what's inside your pipeline. So historically, and uh, a lot of uh, CI systems uh, does that is that like you install your pipeline before and uh, whenever there is like a code change, then you test it. If you need to make a change to your pipeline, you go on the server, you change the pipeline. Here with pipeline as code, the basic idea is to be able like to have your code inside uh, your, uh, your, to have your pipeline inside your code. So whenever like, for example, like you're adding like a new component that needs like different kind of testing, different steps, inside your pipeline, then uh, part of the PR that you're going to spend, do it to send, like it's going to pick up like that same change and uh, and it's going to uh, take effect with, uh, with the change of your code. Uh, so the question of three is like, how you do that? Like when you are like, so as I said, like the, the, the repo history, like is very tight for the change that you have inside uh, the pipeline. So the pipeline reflects the code. And how do you do that like when you have like multiple new, new microservices? Uh, and usually like usually it goes beyond pipeline as code is that it's how you're going to test your microservices. So to be able like to test your microservices, there is different techniques to do that. The like integration technique, uh, integration uh, integration test. And uh, and when you have like multiple microservices, you usually uh, use uh, contract testing. So you have like contracts between different uh, components, microservices, and uh, you just like making sure that they are works to each other. So when you're going to write your pipeline as code pipeline, uh, you're going to have a, like integration testing of those microservices put together. And every time you're doing like a PR to your code, like it's going to run those uh, integration tests, making sure that your change is not going to break it. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks a lot, Shmuel. That, that's um, that's uh, some some great insight. And if in fact this this question alone uh, can be discussed for like the whole afternoon because it's 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 a very complex topic actually. Um, I I did a webinar on that specific topic. It's like CI/CD uh, for microservices. Uh, it was a few few months back. Uh, we can try it find the link and share that afterwards uh, but I think it's also a good topic to discuss because uh, it, it's um, yeah there are a lot of things that you need to address both from an administration standpoint and from a, a developer standpoint or from a DevOps standpoint so so basically one of the key aspects is because you are managing hundreds of services uh, these type of new pipelines allow you to have some genericity something that can be reused across um, the similar uh, applications. So for instance, if your application landscape is composed of 30% of Java apps and 50% uh, of Node.js apps or whatever, so I'm throwing random numbers here, you can try to factor the Java apps into a similar pipeline that will allow you to just point out to a different Java repo and then build out the application with the same exact pipeline and then deploy that microservice uh, somewhere. So what you really need to avoid at all costs is if you have a hundred microservices to create a hundred different pipelines. That's, that's something that doesn't scale. It's not something that you will be able to manage. So the key topic here is fa factor your pipelines and have something that is generic and that can be dynamically adapted to your microservice. So one pipeline definition can serve 30 microservices, for example. That's one of, uh, I would say, the key aspects. Of course, uh, what uh, Shmuel mentioned, integration testing, contract-based uh, testing uh, things, using things like mocks, when the microservices that you rely on are not still available in the uh, testing process. Uh, so yeah, there are many, many techniques that we can maybe discuss. And yeah, Shmuel, I think you wanted to say
say something? Uh, no, I, I just wanted to add uh, to your to your to to your answer. Uh, is that it's uh, like there is there is like as you said like there's so many things like we can talk about uh, for uh, for uh, for microservices, but there is as well like how are you going to structure your code? It's like are you going to have like multiple repository? Are you going to have like a mono repo? Are you going to have like a multiple repos punched together? And the complexity is going to be enormous, like different uh, ways. So a lot of people goes to mono repo, mono repo kind of structure to be able like to uh, to solve those kind of problems. And uh, and then yeah, if you if you start like to have like a hundred uh, hundred microservices, uh, you'll need to think about like how you're going to uh, move it like to a mono repo structure, if because the complexity can be like really great if you have, if you don't have that. Yeah, well, you don't want have, actually, you don't want, I want to have one hundred examples of uh, pipeline as code is basically right what you want to end up not with. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's using not the, what. Using the earlier mm -hmm. example, so you 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 say, okay, well, so there maybe it's sixty forty Java to Node.js. What you're hoping is that in the perfect situation, maybe you have two approaches to pipeline as code. One is your Node.js approach. One is your Java approach. Maybe you have to subdivide it a bit more, but again, you don't want to have a hundred approaches, and that might be yeah. the real challenge. Is that in theory right. it would be possible to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. So uh, also one of the uh, key uh, aspects of uh, this uh, pipeline uh, as code or Tecton is the reusability of tasks. So basically you can define shared tasks that uh, users can, 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 can reference. So basically you don't have to reinvent the wheel for pushing uh, an image to a registry or for building code or for doing integration testing, et cetera. So, it's all there, it's ready on your uh, shelves. You just have to reference it and say, please use this task in my pipeline. And that's how you can have some genericity. And that's how also you, how you can lower the barrier of administration when you need to make something evolve. So if everything is uh, spread out into the 100 pipelines, then whenever there's a change, you will have to manually commit that to each and every one of those 100 pipelines. If you are uh, taking the shared um, approach, shared tasks or whatever you want to call it, uh, you can factor the change in, into a single place and then it's reflected in the uh, 100 pipelines that are going to, to, to reference it. So there are many things that you can use to, uh, I would say, industrialize the way that you, you build your pipelines and actually would be uh, happy to have another episode around this. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that we can leverage, uh, or I don't know if yeah, we can say leverage something, but use as a leverage is uh, the GitOps also in the picture. Uh, it can also simplify uh, a lot of those things. And it can also address what Shmuel uh, mentioned, which is this notion of mono repo or multiple repo, where every microservice is going to have its own um, code and then you have if you are using GitOps, then you have to think about where you're going to store your GitOps uh, resources uh, and, and 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 stuff like that so organization and standardization are key uh, topics that need to drive the conversation uh, and of course it, it, it's not going to happen uh, like uh, from just one guy deciding something it needs to be taken into a DevOps approach where you have everyone uh, thinking about the end, um, I would say uh, the end goals and the, the, the best way to standardize the code, the repos, the pipelines, uh, the testing approach, et cetera. So yeah, I think we have uh, spoken largely enough about that. Covered the, <laughs> cover the microservices. Yeah, exactly. Well, so uh, let, let's back up a little bit, and and you know, for the for the benefit of uh, Stabby and myself here, what needs to happen if you uh, for an OpenShift administrator to mm -hmm. make this capability manifest itself in 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 a in an OpenShift environment, or is this something that uh, that the developers simply start doing, and it works as though by magic? Yeah. So. Uh... <laughs> 
uh, of course, that's the end goal is uh, to to make it uh, appear magical for the developers and make it <laughs> their life easier. And I guess Shmuel can can uh, talk uh, in more details about the the end goal of this. But let's let's dissect that into uh, several uh, things. So I will speak about the OpenShift pipelines. Uh, Shmuel can speak about the pipeline as code. Uh, I will just rephrase what he said to make sure that everyone is on par in terms of understanding what it does. So as an admin, first thing is you will have to install the OpenShift pipelines operator. OpenShift pipelines is our downstream productized uh, supported uh, offering, which is included in OpenShift uh, based on the Tekton upstream project that we spoke about. So it allows you to basically define pipelines as YAML uh, and Kubernetes native uh, resources. Okay, so first thing you need to do is install the OpenShift pipelines operator. Uh, luckily, we made that very easy for our OpenShift users. So as an admin, you can either go through the, uh, I would say, operator hub and install it, or you install it through command line. So I can show you that once we go to the demo section. And then, some things need to happen for the pipelines as code. So just to make sure, I'm going to rephrase what Shmuel said. So once we have the pipelines installed, uh, what we want to allow our users to do is to ship the YAML of their pipeline in their application and don't need to worry about creating the pipelines in OpenShift beforehand. Because if you are using the traditional way, your code, even if you commit and push your changes, nothing's going to, to, to happen unless you have a webhook somewhere that triggers a pipeline that you have already configured before. So it takes several steps before this can happen. So let's say this is the traditional way of doing it. I create my pipeline in OpenShift using YAML or using the UI. So because we have a UI builder where you can basically draw your, your, your CI CD pipeline. Then you create a webhook that your re code uh, repository will use whenever you trigger some events like a git push or git pull or something like that. And all of that needs some administration. You need to configure all of those things. So uh, now switching to the uh, T TKN or pipelines as code, sorry, uh, way of doing it. And Shmuel, if you would like, uh, please to explain uh, how it works and yeah, what needs to be done, yep. that would be good. Uh, yeah, so uh, so as you explained, uh, that um, pipeline as code like plugs into OpenShift pipeline. Uh, so it's a feature on top of uh, OpenShift pipeline that you can add and uh, to make it uh, to to make your uh, to to be able like to uh, do uh, your ci directly uh, from uh, your uh, um, github or from uh, from other uh, vcs provider like source code provider. Um, so currently pipeline as code is a uh, is a is a is a dev preview feature so it's not uh, uh, yet integrated uh, inside the OpenShift uh, pipeline operator, but uh, we are working toward it. And uh, it's currently that the way it works is like it's available like, inside the GitHub organization OpenShift pipeline, and where like you have uh, where where you have like some instructions like how to install. So the thing is like these two parts uh, to it like how, how to do the install. Uh, there is uh, the easy part, which is like applying uh, YAML files inside the cluster, like to get that capability. And and the second part is is to be able like to say like to your source code provider, like GitHub, uh, that all the all the the events happening inside your repo, it's going to it's going to go like to pack to the OpenShift pipeline cluster. So you need to be able like to say that. So to do that, uh, uh, like the main way, like the, the main way is to create like a GitHub app. So that GitHub app is going to be central to uh, to to pipeline as code, and it's how uh, you're going to manage 
all the interaction between pipeline as code and your source code. So what I mean is like whenever like a, a developer is going to send a PR, uh, pipeline as code is going to see it, uh, and it's on the cluster is going to see that there is a uh, that tecton directory inside your source code repo with a pipeline inside it, and it's going to uh, see if it's possible to. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, like if the cluster wants to uh, like as information about it. So if we are able like to to run it or not, and then uh, if the user as well is uh, allowed as well like to do that, and then it's going to run it, uh, run the pipeline as defined uh, inside your source code. So at the point of time of your PR, and then it's going to report like it's going to do a nice report of all the things that has been. Uh, has been uh, failed or has been uh, or has been successful, and uh, with link to the logs to the OpenShift console. So that's the basics of it. And there is multiple features of pipeline as code around that to make it easier to uh, to develop uh, a pipeline as code uh, pipeline, and uh, which is uh, which sits on top of OpenShift pipeline. So. So we have like uh, different like capabilities, like uh, like for example, we have like a, what we call like chat ops capability. So you you able like for example, like when you have like a, an issue with your infrastructure and uh, the pipeline is failing due of that reason, uh, you can just like do like a slash retest inside your PR itself, and uh, it would like restart like the the process. And you can do like different things like for uh, allowing people. So by default, like we try like to make sure. That uh, we we don't allow anyone like using your infra, so not everybody can set a PR for anything. But uh, so I, but someone who's alone like can uh, just do like a slash OK to test, and automatically like you'll have uh, like allow, uh, allowing this. There's other features as well uh, to make it easy. So by default, uh, something that is not possible to do uh, with OpenShift uh, with OpenShift pipeline. Uh, Vanilla OpenShift pipeline is to be able like to get task that's not cluster task or that's not like task inside uh, your uh, names you inside your namespace that's already installed. But uh, with pipeline as code, you're able like to say like I want to uh, pick up that remote task uh, from somewhere else or from the hub, the hub, which is like a catalog of all the tasks that's been. Uh, that has been uh, that has been contributed by uh, by by contributors, and automatically it's going to uh, you can use it inside your pipeline without having like to pre-install it or to reference it from somewhere else. And uh, and that's is the other question that we had uh, previously that we were talking about. It's like it makes it like as well even more easier to share your different tasks uh, because you can just like have a, a simple uh, URL now and you don't have like to pre-install it. So that's the that's some of the features that uh, you have with pipeline as code, and I think part of the demo, uh, it's going to be a more, bit more clear, like uh, how the the flow looks like, and how you mm -hmm. can uh, you can do a PR and iterate into it, and after uh, be sure that it's green or not. Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you, uh, well for for the, the uh, I would say this transition. Uh, should we maybe go to the demo to to it's to the four letter word. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, it's gonna be more visual and afterwards we can talk about what happens in the background. Uh, what can possibly go wrong. Live demo? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, live demos. Well, what can what, what can, can go wrong? Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So first step is uh, I need to succeed in sharing my screen. So that's the first step of a successful demo. Um, can you guys see the screen correctly? <coughs> Is it fine? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah it's good. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, let me try something real quick here. Okay. So I have an OpenShift cluster here where I have a Node.js application. So, where the the goal here is to keep it very simple. Uh, let's have a look at this app. Okay. Let's see. Our OpenShift starters. It says version two dot thirty two, pipelines as code. Okay. This. Uh, Application runs in a namespace where if we look at pipelines, I have no pipelines defined. So traditionally, if I wanted to have CI CD for this application in this project or in another project, the first 
uh, prereq would be to have a pipeline in, uh, that is defined in the namespace. And then I would execute the pipeline by creating what we call pipeline runs. And if we refer back to what I said about having something that is generic, the, the, the pipeline definition is the generic uh, aspect of it. And the pipeline run injects some, some data to say, here's the Git repo that you should use as an input. Here's the output image that I want you to generate and stuff like that. So, uh, okay, we have our image. We see it's version 232 here, and let's have a look at our uh, repo. So to, to speed up things uh, for the demo, I have already created a pull request. And the flow that we're uh, going to look at is, I have this specific pull request that is open, right? And basically I can use it as a conversation uh, with all the developers. So whenever I'm committing a new change to my application, I want some uh, CI CD process to be triggered automatically so we can iterate, et cetera. And once we are all satisfied, we can uh, ultimately merge the pull request into the uh, main branch or something like that. So I have a new branch, which is, I would say, our feature branch. And afterwards, I want to merge my code changes into the master uh, branch, uh, or sorry, we should say main branch, but I haven't updated the terminology since then. So, okay, let's make some very quick changes to our code. So I'm opening up my IDE here, and basically you can see I have version 233, uh, and I'm going to say it's the level up our level up our change. So now I'm gonna commit my changes here, say changes. I, 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 I like how, how it sounds, it's funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then I push uh. my, my changes and uh, wait for something to happen magically. So as a developer, this is what I do. Uh, so uh, let's uh, watch what happens uh, in here as the, the commits get, uh, um, you know, uh, coming into the repo. So uh, this will trigger some magical uh, things that we are going to talk about in the in the background. And now you see in the GitHub interface, I have some indication that the pipeline as code has been triggered and that it's running a CI CD uh, pipeline. So the interesting thing is that directly from OpenShift, I can see the status. I can see that it's running, et cetera. And I can also look at the details directly from here. Uh, so when it's finished, I'm gonna have the summary. If I wanted to check the logs directly from my terminal, I could just run this command. And, oh, I'm not logged in, so I need to log in there first, but let's uh, go back to the uh, UI and uh, have a look at the pipeline. So, uh, so here from the developer perspective, I can uh, see that it's running. It's been triggered recently. <coughs> it's, doing, it's doing the build steps, et cetera. And just to make it easier for me to, to consult, to, to, to see, I have added this notion of pipeline runs into the developer perspective. So just a very quick tip for people who are looking at this. So say you are using a concept of, I would say, image stream, image stream tag that doesn't uh, exist by default in the navigation bar on the left side. You just say add it to navigation. And then on the developer, you have a new item that shows you the things that you, that you need. So uh, that's what I did for the pipeline run. And I see now that the pipeline is being executed here. So uh, for the sake of time, let's go back to some of the uh, previously run um, instances and actually what happens is once the pipeline has succeeded, the pipeline as code uh, feature from OpenShift updates GitHub uh, with the results, the build times for each step, et cetera. And I can have a direct link from here to the task uh, if the logs are still there, if they haven't been erased, et cetera. So you see that directly from the GitHub, I see the status, I get directly uh, to the logs 
uh, etc. So very nice feature. I love it, uh, Shmuel. Very good job, guys. Uh, it's much easier for developers to trigger the pipelines. I don't have to create my webhook in the repo uh, and uh, select the events, etc. So very nice. And thank you for making our life, if, if I'm impersonating the developer, uh, life easier. Um, all right. So uh, other things uh, exist in this uh, in this extension. So let's uh, go back to how it works. So basically, within my repository of my application, I have some files that have been uh, defined. So I have the, the pipeline as code that you can see here. And it basically describes the um, steps that are going to, to, to be executed. You see that I have the first task that is fetch repo. Second task is build the application to, to store the container image. And uh, last task is going to be uh, deploying the application somewhere. I can see it, but uh, yeah, deploy the, the app. So very simple steps uh in my pipeline now whenever i trigger uh, an event so on our case we were uh, speaking about a pull request right so the pull request uh, sorry it's not this file it's a different one uh, uh yes so i believe it's this one um uh, so the pull request uh in um, sorry the pipeline run injects the data that i need for the pipeline to run Basically, it tells where the repo is, what branch I'm going to pull the, the code from, et cetera, what output, et cetera. So here uh, I've done some static things, but basically what's very interesting here is on what type of events am I going to be triggered? So here in my code, in my application repo, I have a file that says whenever you intercept a pull request, configured for this specific repo, and we're going to see how we, we configure that. Uh, please trigger this CI CD pipeline run. And the pull request needs to happen on this specific branch. OK, you can also trigger uh, on different events like a push. If I'm doing a git push, then trigger the pipeline. And if I'm doing the uh, pull request to a QA, then trigger a subset of the pipeline. If I'm trigger, uh, deploying to production, maybe do something more elaborate, etc. So uh, basically, you are defining the the, the how, like uh, so the the when, which is basically on what type of events are you going to react, uh, and you are defining the what is going to happen in the pipeline. So basically, that's the magic behind it. You have so. There's some kind of structure. We spoke about this notion of structuring your repo if you want to provide some kind of magic. Uh, and that's basically um, what we, we, we decided is that you have to, to ship a .decton folder inside your repo. And this is what is going to be triggered. So uh, now before all of those, uh, this magic can happen from the developer perspective, some other things need to be done in the background and that's basically what we are going to try to cover for the remaining uh, time uh, just before that some very nice features that i like uh, that uh, shmuel and so yeah we see that the pipeline has finished everything looks fine it's all green all good you see that it's been run just now we are not uh, like uh, smoke doing smoke and mirrors here it's a live stuff. <laughs> and now say I, I, I have published something else or whatever, and I want to retest basically a specific um, PR. So I just uh, submit the retest command, command, and uh, the pipeline as code is going to intercept that. And basically, it's going to trigger the pipeline again, even if I didn't. Uh, specifically make my commit or whatever. So very nice feature. I love it. Uh, again, Shmuel spoke about some more advanced workflow features where you can approve the PRs like OK to whatever, OK to test, I think, or something like that. 
so yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I love it. Uh, it's advanced. Uh, it's not something that we uh, provided with the, with the previous uh, tooling. We didn't have that, I would say, two-way integration where from uh, OpenShift, you do some stuff in GitHub, for instance, and then get uh, uh, your results back uh, in OpenShift itself. So it's a, a two-way uh, integration, uh, and I, I just love it. Um, so if, so if, if we could course, for a moment, uh, Jafar, yeah. uh, uh, love the demo. We did have a couple of questions come in that uh, sure. that I thought we might want to turn our attention to. Uh, mm -hmm. briefly here. And so uh, um, the first question was, is it possible to deploy the resources to multiple namespaces or are pipelines limited to uh, deploy resources in the namespace which the pipeline is deployed? Yeah, so that's uh, so a great I question. Think, yeah. Shmuel? I don't think that you go, are. Go ahead, Sorry, <laughs> No, no, no. That's, that's the architect of this? <laughs> No, no, I don't, I don't mind either way. But uh, it's just that uh, maybe something that we didn't spoke about because it's a bit low level is that um, is that uh, like when you have uh, like the way it works is that uh, you you have uh, like to be able like, to say that uh, your repo is going to be handled by pipeline as code on that cluster and on which namespace. Uh, we have what we call like a repository uh, CRD, so a resource, a custom resource uh, called repository. And that's going to say that I want to be able like to handle that repo. Uh, and uh, coming, so whenever like there is going to be events coming to uh, OpenShift pipeline and coming from that repo, it's going to be tested in that namespace. So in that case, it's like when you start, like it only, it's only going to stop on that namespace. But then if you want like, to use like two uh, different uh, namespaces, uh, you can have part of your pipeline as code uh, step. You can have like a deployment step or like something else that's going to be able like to deploy it on another namespace. But then you're only allowed to uh, do that if you have like some rules, RBAC rules, to say that uh, this user is allowed to deploy on that other namespace. Because uh, obviously you don't want to allow to do uh, to have uh, everything to allow to have access to everything yeah, on the cluster. Yeah, correct. So that's like uh, and cluster. so ba basically, yeah, that's that's a mix of um, yeah. You you are going, for example, to use service accounts, dedicated service accounts to do subsets of your pipelines, and whenever. So, for example, uh, for me. Uh, in a previous demo, I was doing the build in a different namespace, and then I was deploying in this namespace. But just for the sake of simplicity and avoiding to switch back and forth, I, I put everything in, in the same namespace. But what you have to do is to, to give that service account the correct uh, role to be able to do whatever it needs to do in that namespace. So for example, uh, if you want to, to build and push uh, the image to a specific um, uh, namespace, then you have to give it the edit role or, or something like that. Uh, or if you want to deploy, uh, you, 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 you would need to, to give it the specific uh, rights using the, the OpenShift role-based access uh, stuff. So, um, so I think the, the, answer, the answer I'm discerning is that it is yes, uh, but it's not something that it's going, it, it's going to actually require a bit of, you know, user and access control. And you're going to want that because it, to the to the earlier point, you don't want it to yes. be the case that something can simply be be leveraged, and the next thing you know, there are things coming into your pipeline that you never expected to have coming into your pipeline, right? Especially yeah. with yeah. events coming from the internet, you really don't want like to let uh, everything <laughs> happen in there right. and we solve the miners yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, that yeah, might right. be a problem. So we had another so, question too, uh, going back a little bit. The uh, the deliciously named bacon fork. Uh, was posing the question of what kinds of things can you check for? And this was while we were, you know, in the demo. And so we might have to rewind our brains a bit here. Uh, what kinds of things can you check for? And I, I guess I would say it, it, it probably depends on the particular point in your pipeline that you're talking about. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure I completely understand the question, but basically 
you are defining uh, in your pipeline whatever events or whatever tasks you want to 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 trigger and this is uh, what is going to be checked within within the pipeline so if for some reason a specific task fails so meaning one of your checks because basically a pipeline is a set of checks and and actions so i'm checking i'm doing something then i'm checking that what i when it happened, uh, if it happened, then I go uh, to the next task. If not, then I fail uh, miserably my pipeline and say, okay, so please uh, go ahead and, and make changes to whatever. So yeah, each step is going to be, I would say a check in itself because it's using Tekton, you are going to define uh, whatever uh, tasks you are going to reference tasks that you have built on your own or that you have uh, pulled from the public uh, hubs. Uh, and then you, you, you are going to use them in your pipelines. I hope I understood the, the questions correctly, but yeah, that's my honest uh, answer to what I understood. <laughs> You're sticking with it. Maybe if you can understood it. Yeah, sorry. I was, I was just yeah. adding like, maybe if you didn't understand the question and the question was about, uh, what kind of events pipeline as code can handle, and uh, but okay. what, and uh, in that case, I mean that's a that's a good information too. It's like we handle the events of uh, push and pull request, so so that's the two events, uh, that's ending, and uh, and you can data do that on the different uh, different branch, like uh, like we say main master or whatever, and or uh, release tags uh, if you want it. So if you want like to launch a pipeline. Uh, whenever you push to a, a release for a tag, then uh, you can handle that events too. So that's just like to add to it in case um, that was what uh, the user was meaning to, to ask. All right. So Scott, you actually had a question. Um, and you know, you, you are on air. You do get to just speak up and ask them. You don't have to type them in the chat, dude. Indeed. But I, I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget to ask it. Uh, and then also... <laughs> You know, I was kind of in the middle of Jafar's demo, and I want to interrupt his flow. There so, you so, so just, just sorry, uh, I said I was going to show also some of the cool things that they built for the admin side of it. So there's still uh, another uh, set of demos that I was wanted to show. But yeah, just go ahead, please. And uh, I promise we will come back. I'll try to 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 push whatever I can in the demo. So you're gonna have to talk really fast. Get to ask my questions. Yes, yeah, speak. Yeah, go ahead. So, you know, rolling back to the beginning, um, I just have a more rudimentary question about the integration with GitHub. So, did you guys set up a webhook so that the operator is triggered by the webhook, or does the operator just like do something? Thank weird? you, thank you very much, uh, Scott, for for the question because that's exactly what I was going to show. So, uh, all right, the, the, cle the clever guys. So I, I hope it's going to work because I haven't. I'm switching to a completely different cluster that doesn't have it installed, uh, and I hope it's going to work. Uh, a new I, live uh, demo. Yeah, a new live demo. Let's let's take uh, risks again and what could and possibly see, go wrong and, and see if we make it alive. So all right, well, so um, let's go to the let's go to that demo. Uh, we ha did have some more questions, and hopefully we can maybe come to them sure. at the end. But I am okay. eager to see this. All right. So, so first thing, um, so as a prereq, as I said, uh, we need to have the, uh, the OpenShift pipelines operator mount, and that needs to happen um, from, so you can do it for, for example, from the operator, uh, uh, so OpenShift operators. So I see that we have the pipelines operator that should be installed. Yeah, so we see that it has been already installed in, in this cluster, but the pipeline as code uh, shouldn't exist, or if it does, we are going to uh, delete it, like savagely delete it. So I'm on a different cluster, right? And let's remove it and show you how no, that's not what I want to remove. Uh, I want to delete pipelines as code and it's not there. So that's good. All right. So that's what I thought because I, I, I had taken care of that. 
Now let's go back to our terminal and we have some nice uh, command <coughs> line called TKN pack. And TKN pack is for Tekton. So uh, we have the Tekton uh, CLI, which is TKN. And we have, I would say, an extension of it called TKN pack for pipeline as code. And one of the uh, options that you have is the bootstrap. And the bootstrap is, is uh, basically taking care of all of those background things that you said, uh, that you, you mentioned, Scott, and that you need to do as an admin is basically enable the feature on the cluster. So let's try it and uh, hope that Shmuel did some good job uh, on, uh, on that. So no first pressure. thing, yeah, no pressure. I mean, if it doesn't work, that's not my fault, right? <laughs> so I, I have to mention, speaking of that, that Shmuel has been amazing in, in, in terms of support. So, okay, let's go ahead and install it. And basically we were on Slack and I'm trying some, some funky things. And I, I ping him on Slack and say, you know, uh, the application or this stuff doesn't work. He says, okay, please, please remain there. He makes some, some, some weird changes on his like code. He pushes and, and asks me to, to try it like 20 minutes afterwards and it works. So <laughs> amazing. Yeah, so basically he is your CICD pipeline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, he is right. making change, changes to the pipeline as code. Uh, plugin. Pipeline as code, pipeline as code, use pipeline as code to do the development. So it goes yeah. much faster than feedback loop. So um, yeah, we're going to create a GitHub app called Tla app. And it says, okay, I have detected that there is a, a, a route that is going to intercept all my events, et cetera. And look at the, the cleverness of, of these guys. They have created an automated way for us. Oh my God, I have to log into GitHub and I have my two factor stuff. So yeah. Uh, okay, create the GitHub app for me. And whoa, it's. It's there, magic. So now I have my GitHub application that has been created for me. And this is basically what is going to intercept all of those uh, funky events. So first thing, that's a conversation we had yesterday. If you are using, uh, so basically, yeah, the, 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 the app is here. Before using it in the repo, let's have a look at what it, some of the th things. So yes, it's, it points back to the uh, interceptor that we have on our cluster, right? And now it says enable SSL verification. I am not using trusted certificates on this uh, home lab. So yeah, I'm just making sure that I'm, uh, uh, I would say, yeah, um, not using that, that setting. Now, if I go back to the main app, I can now uh, install the application. And I can choose what repo I want to install it on. So I can say, push it to all my repos or only to some specific repos. And then it's going to intercept those events. And it's the equivalent of creating all the webhooks for the concerned repos, uh, except that it's one single entry point that you uh, create and that can take care of that uh, that magic behind the scenes so all went well for the uh, uh, enablement of the feature on the on the new cluster and if i check for as code i should have a new project here and maybe i have also my running pod in there so yeah great the interceptor is working and fine and now if i use that application in a repo uh, it's going to create the pipelines on this new cluster even though i haven't uh, created pipeline definitions on my uh, namespace so and just uh, quickly it, yeah just, just just quickly because i know we're going to go out of time is that uh, is that there is a lot the like with bootstrap like the thing like makes it easy is that uh, it makes like it makes like a lot of manual steps like automatic, so it's going to create like a secret on the cluster and it's going to manage and uh, do a lot of things. 
Uh, so that's that's a quick way to get you started. So the, the end goal actually for the, as a product is like is to make it part of OpenShift pipeline. But TK Impact Bootstrap is like is mostly like if you want like to get started and uh, and uh, and uh, to get started and be able like to to uh, to try it, to try it on. And uh, there is as well like uh, uh, all the manual step that's 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 referenced in the in documentation. If you really wanted like to go that way. And uh, hopefully we are working to get uh, the operator. So a lot of the steps are going to be are going to be handled by the operator. Uh, but some part of it, like uh, the creation of the GitHub apps, which actually we implemented this because we had a lot of uh, because before we didn't have this, but a lot of people were making uh, uh, were not checking like the right uh, uh, case like when creating the apps. So like, like it's really tedious uh, manual process. Yeah. But uh, the, so that's why we we made it. Uh, we made it so it takes like <laughs> yes, I had, I had a lot of bug reports and people bug me about it. So, uh, but uh, now it's like it makes like literally if you want to try on uh, Python as code, you just need to go to the web page and uh, download the CLI TK and Pack Bootstrap, and as long as you have our uh, OpenShift cluster and uh, and a GitHub uh, GitHub account, then uh, you'll be set to go. And the pipeline is operator. Uh, okay, so yeah. so yeah, let's make sure we've got the list together here. You're going to need the pipelines operator, and then we're also yeah. going to need what was that package again? Uh, yeah, TKN, 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 TKN CLI, okay. which yeah, we can CLI. drop. Uh, yeah, so the, if we can maybe drop in that the, in the chat just so that people know, because I think there's going to be a lot of interest in uh, in being able to do this. Uh, you know, being able to have that single view into this within OpenShift to manage it within OpenShift. I think just the more I think about it, the more beneficial it starts to appear. So uh, we did have a couple of other quick questions. Um, first of all, as, as always, uh, you know, there's the question about what are the resource requirements to implement this? Is it going to be part of my same namespace or cluster? Uh, so that's the, the, the beauty of it is that there's no, there's no resource requirement extra i mean uh, i mean the way we no, designed no the incremental there's no incremental resource requirement beyond the openshift deployment you already have that's correct so open uh, pipeline as code is a, is a, is a, is implemented as openshift pipeline so there is no demons they're all like using like uh, internal components from uh, openshift pipeline uh, which is a uh, triggers component uh, task pipeline so, uh, so you don't have like you don't need like to have a uh, to uh, to have like a special like deployments and uh, it's going to have like demons and things and so it is that uh, it's only going to react to events coming from outside and it's going to use like a, what we call like event listener like a tr tecton trigger event listener which is built in inside OpenShift pipeline to be able like, to handle those events. So there is no extra requirement uh, resource requirement. Really. Great. And so uh, I think another question that we had was, uh, can you share with us a holistic view of each stage of the pipeline? And so I'm wondering if perhaps we have, a, you know, a link or web resource that we can point someone towards. Yeah, so um, I would say, so, so sorry to, to phrase, that, phrase it that way because uh, I'm not a, a native English speaker, but I don't think the content of the pipeline itself is meaningful because basically I've done a very simple pipeline to show like build, uh, like uh, build the code, uh, build the container image and deploy. So basically very, yeah. very simple stuff. But we have a lot of other more sophisticated and more meaningful uh, text on pipelines that we could uh, show you, maybe if it makes sense as another episode uh where basically we do all the stuff like ci we use sonar we use uh unit tests we use integration tests we use code coverage and you know all of those funky stuff and security code scanning and uh so there do it i logistics. mean basically there could be a lot of yeah. different stages that and that's the beauty of this yeah. is that you are yeah. with the code literally defining what all of those yeah. stages might be and it might be that you have a simple a very simple naive one stage model uh you know for the purpose of a yeah. demo or something a bit more than that or you could actually have something that has quite a few different stages because it's required by your particular app or governance or 
you know, compliance, whatever kinds of things might be in the picture that need to go through a much more staged process. And so I, I guess it's, in a sense, the answer to that question is, is the holistic view is whatever you choose to actually build as your to, to, pipeline to put it there. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very cool stuff. Well, uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions or closing comments? Shmuel, it looked like you got. Just a... need to add uh, something. Is that about uh, OpenShift Console? I don't think uh, Jaffa had a chance uh, to show it uh, uh, because uh, it's part of uh, OpenShift Four Nine. So on OpenShift Four Nine on the OpenShift Console, we have an integration, like a visual integration of uh, the the repo is choice, like of Pac-Man as code. Mm -hmm. So basically. Uh, you, you, if you have like Pac-Man has got installed on OpenShift 4.9, you'll get uh, 